publications books a lot of his DVDs he travels around he lectures he teaches he is primarily involved with Okinawa now what do I mean by that okay aside from having studied uh, Shoran Ru when he first began he is also heavily involved with going back and forth it's almost like your second home it is absolutely it is like a home, let me welcome Hanchi George Alexander. Beautiful. Hanchi Steve. Alexander. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, my pleasure. It's great to be in New York. It's great uh, to be well, in the same time. Okinawa is essentially your second home, but you're originally from New York, aren't you? I am. I Tell am. us a little bit about your background. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a New Yorker. I moved to South Florida, and then uh, I was in the military when the Marines uh, was overseas, did all that sort of thing. Came back. I did 13 months in Vietnam was the last part of my... Uh, my tour in the, the Marine Corps, and uh, spent some time in California, and that was like in 1968, Beach Boys were playing in the background, okay. it was karate, it was wonderful, mm -hmm. and uh, then I moved back to South Florida, we lived there for quite a while, then I moved to the mountains of Tennessee, it was way the mountains back. of Tennessee, yeah, way back, gorgeous there, way, I have no doubt. way yeah, back, way back, Tennessee. Uh, oh man, that's a long story. We, All right, we, we'll, need, we'll another, we need another. We need another. We got twenty-seven. Yeah, we need another podcast. <laughs> wow, you okay. 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 So uh, <laughs> told you I could answer those questions. There you go. Uh, and then I moved to New York. I moved here a year and a half ago, so I'm uh -huh. very, uh, very happy. Got a new dojo. It's uh, about an hour, about two hours north of New York City. Mm -hmm. Where's it located? It's in a little town called Philmont, which is just east of Hudson, New York. All right. Got a gorgeous dojo. It's 2,100 square feet. We've got the mats, the wooden floor. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah, it's not going to happen in Manhattan. People don't know. 2,100 square right. feet in Manhattan is like a gymnasium. Right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, so I've got a really nice, uh, nice looking dojo there. Uh huh. You built it from scratch essentially. From well, it's old. It, it's an old building. And yeah. then uh, the the space was actually closed up for 50 years or something. It was dirt like six inches thick on everything. Wow. So we uh, kind of did a karate kid thing there and sanded the floors. And, All right. And uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. You'll see. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a clip we're going to show the folks. Yeah. And wonderful. we'll give them a little virtual tour. A little virtual tour. Yeah. Yeah. So you're really happy up there, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm delighted up there. It's only two hours away. As a matter of fact, when you and I first started talking, I says, All right, we're going to go up to the dojo. And I says, Whoa, 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 what is this two hours ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. right. yeah. George, what? come to New York. Right. And you said, it's hey, you got no problem doing that. Okay. No, 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 no. Wow, so so you're really uh, happy. How's the uh, student population up there? Are you pulling the right amount of people it's and the little, right kind of people? It's a little slim. <laughs> a little, <laughs> it's a little slow. I mean, you don't have to quite have the population up yeah. there. So I've, I've got a few students, but uh, the ones I have are good because, you know, I just punish them, so they're, they wind up being good. Okay. In fact, we just fought in Gary Alexander's tournament, uh, what, a month ago? And yes. those, those guys got first and second place in uh, Kumite, or sparring there. And we fought in a Kyoku Shinkai tournament uh, just a few days ago, last weekend. Uh -huh. Where and, is that? Uh, that was in New Paltz, New York. Okay. Shigiro Oyama, World Oyama okay. Karate, yes. yeah. and uh, they got first and second place in that as well. So well, that, that's all because of your input. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, you know, and one thing we don't do on Hanshi's World is we don't do the humble thing. Okay. Well, good. I'm, <laughs> in, the right, I'm in the right place okay. then. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because I, I found a lot of people that, like you know, sometimes I talk to them, they get very reticent, oh, why yeah, sure. want to talk about that? I said, well, good, take it somewhere else. Yeah, get over that. Yeah. Get no, over no, that. No, no, we're here to let people know what's going uh, on. I am going to make a, a shoe wheel up to your 
dojo. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll sleep in a dojo for a couple of nights or something. Yeah, okay. we got a we got plenty of room. Yeah, okay. Sounds great. But yeah, we're doing a traditional karate. That I do two styles. I do a shoulder and okay. and I do another one called hakutsu kempo, which essentially is well, the precursor. It's dojo sure. room. It's, 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 but it came before. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Sure. Okay. From China, actually. Who was the uh, primary um, master? Grande maestro. Of, of which one? Of Habatur Tempo? Of Habatur Tempo. That's yeah. me now, okay? Well, before you. But I, oh, before me. I thought you said it. I, mean, <laughs> I thought I was supposed to. You weren't around in the 1890s. <laughs> I mean, I didn't well, know you that. may have been looking at yeah. hair. At least you had hair. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, no, I mean, you know, in China, it's Su Ying Han is one of them. Oh, from, right, from yeah. From Yangshan right. Village. Village. Yeah, from Yangshan yeah, Village. Absolutely. Yeah, right. And I did a yeah, pretty yeah. He, um, He's one of the grandmasters, and okay. there's more than one in Yangshan Village in southern China. You know, I made a, a trip there as part of the research and, uh, you know, worked out with those guys and all that sort of thing. And, um, you know, the White Crane system comes from that village, Yangshan Village, about 350 years ago. And then it migrated from Fujian province, southern China over to Okinawa and it influenced the Okinawan uh, martial arts. How was the uh, training, the actual training itself in China when you were there? Was it much more intense than on Okinawa? Was I remember when I was on Okinawa with Nagamini mm -hmm. back in right. Sakurazaka, <laughs> the back alley over there, it was pretty intense. I mean, we had it, obviously the language barrier, so there was only one, one way right. to explain things to me at that time. Not that that was that <laughs> it was great. It was great. We really did a lot of work in over there, you know? Yeah. I would say that the Okinawans train harder than uh -huh, okay. the Chinese guys. Now, the, it depends where. That's a, that's a broad statement. And so I also trained with some monks in several different monasteries over there, uh -huh. the Shaolin Monastery, of which there's two, at least two, in Fujian province. And those are, they're young guys, and all they do is work out all day and lift weights all day. And there, there's it's the, nice to not have to worry about a day job, right? No, no, they don't have a day job. They that's right. That's what they do. That's the job. That's what right? they do. Yeah. Sure. And so those guys are those guys are very good. Uh -huh. but, uh, but your normal lay people or village folk that are just doing stuff. I mean, they're good, but I mean, they're not. Uh, they're not one hundred percent immersed in the vote. No, no. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. know. So how did you get into Shorin Ru? Oh boy. Well, you know, as a young well, you were in Vietnam. Right. Well, before, before that, you know, as a young okay. as a young Marine, okay. I at a boot camp I went to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. All right. And at that time there were a lot of Marines coming back from Okinawa and mainland Japan. All right. And uh, yeah, there was karate all over the place. So I saw people jumping around with white suits and fighting. I what said, year was this? Nineteen sixty four. Okay. So I said, Good. wow, this is for me. You know, this is cool stuff. Yeah, you kind of know. You kind of yeah. know, like, if this is for you, or you just want to take karate lessons. Right. Or, you, know. you, or you, you sense that you're going to, you know, something, I've got a funny feeling this is going to be what I do. This right. This is going to be my whole trip. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe some people are like, it's like taking a cooking class or something. You know what I mean? Okay. No, yeah, for, well, me, <laughs> for me. For me. How to make the pasta a little bit better, right? No. No, for me, I saw the guys in the white suits, and I said, wow. That appeals to me, so yeah. I was like instantly attracted to it. And then, uh, and then later on, of course, I went to Okinawa, and then I went to uh, from there I went to Vietnam. I did 13 months in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and then I, I got out. You went. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I ran patrols along the DMZ actually. That okay. Was my job. All right. I got ran reconnaissance patrols along the all the DMZ. Yeah. So not like like you hear a lot of people say they were in Nam or something you know, like Fantasy Island. Okay. <laughs> Hanshi Alexander was into. The stuff. Yeah. yeah, I'm lucky to be here. Let's put it that way. All right. Yeah. So anyway, that's a whole other. The story. students are lucky that you're here. Too. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Well, but, the hell? but you know, after uh -huh. after what 50 years plus in the martial arts, I mean, and plus having a passion for it. Yeah. I mean, you do accumulate knowledge, and, and of course, the part of the the pleasure is to be able to pass that on to your students, and that's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm doing. Where do you see uh, karate going? Oh boy. Um, well, given it's, given, it's still, the, it's given still, the insanity that's well, going on, well, you know, it's it's still going to be around. I mean, yeah. you know, traditional karate, yeah. traditional martial arts, which means judo, jujitsu, kendo, kobudo, all that sort of thing. Yeah, that that's going to be around. I, I don't see that going away anytime soon, for sure. Now, there's always a fad. There's always going to be uh, something like that that catches the public's eye, so to speak. But then, uh, but I think the more serious traditional people, I, th that, I think that'll be around. 
It's not going anywhere. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, when I first came back from uh, Okinawa, mm -hmm. I was stationed out in Corvallis, Oregon, at the Dare Air Force Station. And uh, I had met someone else, uh, a couple of the people who had come back from Japan, had come back from Korea, and we all started going down to the base gym and working out and starting what we got. Next thing you know, we had an Air Force karate <coughs> team kind of thing, mm -hmm. and we, started, we got sanctioned by the JKA. But what we were doing over there, outside of our regular AFSE, our, our regular Air Force work, all the time, when we weren't on duty or sleeping, we're working out yeah, at the gym, okay? Sure. And uh, it really, really developed into a whole different way of thinking. I mean, I was started getting, I was starting to get affected by it on Okinawa, based on the culture and getting involved with the arts and the land and the people and things like that. That I know you obviously, you absolutely have gotten totally immersed in it. Okay. Oh, yeah. What drew you to it? Not the karate. What drew you to the? We're supposed to say Asian. What drew you to the East? Yellow area? fever. Yeah. Is that what you yeah, tell yeah. you like that one? How did you get yellow Happen? fever, man? Yellow fever. <laughs> um, Very good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay. Geez, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, an intangible. I mean, I just was always fascinated by the East, the Orient, uh -huh. Asia, and all things, and especially martial arts. So I was just sort of always attracted to that. But uh, my original attraction to karate, in a sense, was you know, as a young Marine, you know, I was always trying to improve myself, my physical fitness, you know, I was running 10 miles a day to train for forced recon and all this kind of stuff. Well, that was a whole different oh, yeah. mindset. So, 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 so the, my, my attraction for, for the karate stuff was this was an ancillary measure to, uh, to expand myself as a, as a combat Marine. In other okay. words, you know, I got a rifle, I got a radio, I can call in fixed wing air support and artillery and stuff like that. And if that fails, I, I got a rifle, you know, if that if fails, that I got fails. a bayonet. If that fails, I have karate. Boom, see? there you go. So, right. you know, so that was part of the mindset, to, okay. to have a, uh, a skill set that included everything from uh, close air support to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Okay, so in your perspective, then, the martial arts aren't really in... Oh, I don't like to use the word art. Yeah, it's okay. a little confusing. It's a, yeah, because arts to me is like entertainment. Yeah, or Picasso or something right. like that. Right, martialism. I, I hey, just okay. martialism, okay? Uh, sure. There's a whole different mentality there that prepares you to deal with every circumstance in your life. You know, see, it's not going, okay, well, I'm going to be in a contest and I'm going to win an eight-foot trophy. Right. Of. That's, that's novelty. That's martial arts. The real stuff you're coming from Musashi, coming from any of the samurai mentality, coming from any of the Ryukyu warriors, okay? These people lived it because without it, that was it. Well, you're talking yeah. about warrior culture, true yeah. warrior culture versus sport. Is what That's right, on. absolutely. So with warrior culture, you, know, have, you have more of an intensity, you have a heightened awareness, you have what's called in the military situational awareness. That's so right. Somebody's sneaking up behind you or whatever. Uh, sleeping with one eye open, whatever you want to call it. No, that's that's a different mindset. You know, if you're Johnny and you go to the you know the karate tournament or the taekwondo tournament on the weekend, and you're like eight, that's like a different mindset. That's you know? right. Or twenty eight. <laughs> well, <laughs> as well as developing. And, and that's yeah. a sport, and that's fine. You know, we shouldn't belittle that. You know, that's a I sport. Think, yes. That is another facet of the martial arts, and there's a little bit too much of the bitching and one-upsmanship. You know. I mean, to recognize that, uh, you know, that's a, that's a sport, and that's what people do on the weekends. They go to a tournament or something that's like it. that, and they compete. It's fine. They get a trophy. It's wonderful. Uh, the other thing is, if you're in real combat, you know, and if you need to, oh, and, yeah. You, yeah, it's another mindset. I mean, you're shitting in your pants and peeing yourself or something. You know, it's, that's a different, right. it's a different deal. So that, and that can be part of martial arts training as well. That's all. And, and then, and then self-defense. That's yet another aspect. Yes. Right? I, well, I think self-defense is essential. I think they should teach all the kids in school forms of self-defense to help them deal with bullies, sure. to help them deal with basic sure. everyday situations. Yeah. But the reality of it is the intense martial mentality that develops from being into situations that are life or death yeah. is a different kind of thing. Oh, yeah. and it's not for everyone. No. It is not for everyone. No, it isn't. I mean, look how screwed up I am. <laughs> Just kidding. You heard that here. Oh, sorry. Okay. 
You've written a number of books. I have. Okay, and I first became aware of you at one of the uh, Hall of Fame dinners in Atlantic City. Okay. I was doing my thing over at my table with the swords and with my books. And I, I remember that. And I said, yeah, and I looked up and I said, let me see what he's got. And I looked up and said, whoa, okay. There's some... I've been busy here. <laughs> very, very busy. You've been very busy doing this. You are essentially a, a historian. This is true. You know the roots of where it all came from and how it all started. You wrote one of your great books that, like, I think is probably essential for anyone who wants to study the roots of the art. Yeah, okay. Okinawa, Island of Karate. And quite frankly, in this book, you really spell out the whole history of karate from the uh, Okinawan perspective. Why don't you tell us a little bit, how did you get into doing this? Okay. okay. Well, you know, I had a natural curiosity like anybody else that gets into the martial arts. Well, maybe not everybody has this curiosity. I don't know. But I did. And so my curiosity was, well, you know, where, what's the history of this? Uh, where did it come from? And uh, why, why are we learning this? And what does it mean? And, yes. Uh, all this sort of, so I had all these questions. And of course, at that time, you know, this would have been in the late 60s, early 70s, people didn't have the answer to that. Not in this country so much, anyway. No. So it was a natural curiosity. And when I was going to college, uh, I talked my uh, Asian history professor into letting me do an independent study. Where did you go to college? Uh, FAU, Florida Atlantic University. Okay. You're, uh, you have your PhD in political science? Yes. Okay. So anyway, so I'm there. My undergraduate degree is accounting, though. It's kind of All business right. administration. So, but uh, I had a professor, East Asian history professor, Dr. Dow, actually. and. Um, I talk, he was Chinese, and I said, hey, I want to do a paper on karate, independent study. So he probably didn't even know what karate was. There's no <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sure he right. didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think so. He said, yeah, okay, go do it. Go away, come back when the semester's over, give me a paper. So I spent the entire semester doing interlibrary loan things with books and research. And they, had, they had the information you needed? A lot of it they had. And some of, really? it had to be, okay. some of it had to be translated, but it's like anything else. You're gathering information, sifting through it, and trying to make some sense. Because you follow lineages of oh, yeah. schools. Well, I mean, that's that's so, not so like this, sitting down and just well, looking something up on the internet. You know? I, I, I'm saying, you know, well, this is way before the internet. Yes. But I'm saying what I did was, you know, I did a paper. So the paper was the genesis or the beginning of the book. And then, of course, after that, I worked on that book for like another 10, 10 years okay. or something like that to get all those lineages and all those things and, and then put that together. And then that became kind of a uh, classic. Okay. Come across this other gem called the Bubishi, Bubishi. You know, which means martial arts spirit. And so this is this mystical well, you, you, you See, you folks are going to have to buy these books, <laughs> but I'm the host, so I get them for free. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, the, the Bubishi, okay, the spirit of karate. Very important work. So yeah, so so that book has uh, this is like a 17th century yeah, book. Yeah. Oh, so this was an actual piece that you yeah. had. Uh, this is a 17th century it. book, which is what what I call the mystical source book of karate. So a lot of the Okinawans got lots of information, techniques, and tactics, and things from that book. Um, and it also has the most esoteric stuff in there, which is you know, pressure point hitting and that stuff. Okay. And it has this idea that the 12 hour clock, and if, and, and, uh, and if you if you hit somebody with a certain pressure point. They'll drop dead at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's three, right. three that's days right. later they fall over dead, or seven days later, yeah. or six months, and so. See, so a lot of you folks have heard of these stories, you know, with the iron palm, didn't mock and things like that. So yeah, quaint. Maybe it works, it does work. It works, it's real, but it's not something that you're going to go take a class and learn it. This is based on intense meditation, intense study, intense wrenching of your soul. Well, to find yeah. out these things, well, to be able to then like to, go to touch somebody in three days later, boom, gone. Okay, you're so, not going to do that. Right, so, th no, so this is the source book. That's where all that information comes mm -hmm. from, right? And so, anyway, that, that took another 10 years, I think, okay. or quite a while to put all that together. Mm -hmm. And so I published that, and then I published some other training manuals on karate and one on jujitsu. And uh, I did a dictionary, pull that dictionary out. That dictionary is unbelievable. It's uh, about 450 pages, I think, and it has kanji 
in, in addition to the English definitions of, of each term or, uh, that's in there, it has, a, it, has a, it has a it has the Japanese Japanese characters for uh, for everything in there, and so it's amazing. I mean, it's every Japanese martial art, including sumo. I mean, weapons, jujitsu, you know, incredible. Dictionary of martial arts also available through Yamazawa. Yes. Okay. How do you feel physically now at this particular point in your life? I mean, you're like, uh, by the years of age, you yeah. know, so... Uh, you want an honest yeah. opinion? Yeah, I, and I'm not going to tell you my age. They already know. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to know it. Ladies, I'm 57. Oh, yeah, All right, end the story. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like hell, man. No, no, no. <laughs> I feel, I feel, uh, I feel pretty good uh, yeah. physically. I mean, I still work out quite. Yeah. A bit. Okay. But there's, um, you know, when you get past sixty or sixty-five, no, well, you're feeling it, man. <laughs> you're feeling it. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And so what happens is the joints kind of wear out a little bit. Uh, you can wear yourself out. The reflexes China, aren't as great as they used to be. Well, I don't know. My hands are still pretty fast. So you speed and then you your strength curve. Good, actually, you said that. actually, what happens is yeah. your strength cur curve, I believe, naturally yeah, goes, goes up, up as you go. That's right. You just your get strong. quickness. Okay, and your I think quickness your speed develops. Tell us a little bit about the International Shorin Ru uh, Karate Federation that sure. you're the head of. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we have dojos. You know, we've got some dojos in Italy and overseas and Brazil. How many dojos are you the head of? God. <laughs> I don't even know. How embarrassing is that? I no, it's not. Because it's a very real thing. You know, I mean, I people that know. say they studied with me like many years ago have no idea who they are. So I, I, I got plenty of those too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I studied with them. Yeah, you. yeah. When they say, and I'm, 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 I'm right in their face. No, you no. Know? I, I got them. They kind of say, hey, remember me? I trained with you. I was yeah. eight years old. Now the guy's like 45 or something. Let's go to the camp. The camp. I was just getting to that. So I'm glad you brought that up. I don't want to so we, for a reason. we have <laughs> yeah. so as part of as part of the International Shogun Karate Kobudo Federation, we do have a summer camp every year, and you know all of our people sort of not all but many get together. The senior instructors and stuff. We all get together and we uh, we work out. Is that uh, film? In film, yeah, yeah. And so uh, we had the first one there last. We've been doing this for 25 years or so. In Philmont? No, no, not in oh, Philmont. Okay, okay. Other locations. Okay. But last year was the first year in Philmont, and it worked very well. And I used to do this thing called watermelon kumite, where we strapped watermelons to ourselves and we would fight. And if you smash the other guy's watermelon, you won. You know, and it was really a lot of fun. It, I come up there and uh, you know. Do a guest appearance. Oh, sure. Like Absolutely. Like so, so what happened was I abandoned that. When is it going to be? It's going to be uh, the first weekend of August. First it's, weekend of August. It's the first weekend of August every year. Okay, so you'll get, they'll be able to get all the information. Sure, absolutely. Con the just contact me. I'll send it all. I'll email you. you know. Good. And so, uh, so what we have started last year, this new, we have something called the Combat Maze. And what that is, is we took the third floor of this old building, put vinyl over the windows, blacked it out, and built passageways or hallways in there. And okay. so you go through there, and then people jump out at you with knives and clubs and things. So you have to defend yourself and disarm them. So it is a true test of your of your martial skill. So how many psychos do you actually have? <laughs> <laughs> so we got quite a few. Quite a few right? I would oh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, people were a little scared of it at first. Of course. Because it's kind of terrifying, okay? Right. Especially with the guys that I have up there doing the attacking. And so, uh, and then the screaming. It sounds like an insane asylum, okay? And, uh, but it was really you fun. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's really fun. I mean, it's a, it's a way you really get to test your martial skills. Yeah. Some people are, you know, uh, complaining about the, uh, the MMA stuff. Um, and it's, hey, it's a sport. MMA is a sport. And, uh, you know, if you want your, I'm too handsome to have my ears look like that, so I can't do MMA, right? Yeah. But, I mean, I don't, I don't begrudge that. That's just another iteration, another generation of the evolution of martial arts. And in fact, I did an article for Black Belt Magazine, something about martial arts come full, back to the future, martial arts come full circle. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it talked about how in ancient Greece, in 683 B.C., what was the first pancreation? Oh, Jim Albanitis. Do you know right. that? Yeah, absolutely. Great, short, great, right? great Yeah, that guy had been promoting that for years. Yeah. And of course, you know, and, and so we've, we've almost returned 
to gladiatorial combat. Is that's the correct, MMA. Yes. That's what's the, the thrill of the masses, you know, and, and so that's what's happened there. But uh, yeah, so I don't agree much people for that. I mean, if that's what you want to do, and if you're young and full of testosterone, and boom. You know, I did Kyogo Shinkai when I was 20 years old, so, you know, I mean, I know you had some complaints about what we're talking about. You know, what about this guy? What about that guy? You know? And so there... No names, no, no names, no names. No there there names, does yeah. seem to be... Yeah. You know, like, like, like when I was 20, when I, if a guy was a knee down, man, that was a really That was serious. Rank. That was serious. You know, now I look around, you know, I go to these different shows. and 15 degrees. Yeah. I mean, there's there's grand guys, grand that are grandmasters, and the guy's like 28 years old. It's yeah. like... You should be like a fourth don, maybe, or a fifth don, but not a tenth don. I mean, fourth don, I mean, fourth Q. Yeah, well, whatever. Okay, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Uh, yeah. But they shouldn't be a But we have attitudes, and I think we should have attitudes, having spent a couple of weeks of my life involved with DR, you know? So, yeah. We don't know. You, you know, you, oh, look, if you, if you, you get to it, have an opinion at this right. stage. That's right. That's right. If you're doing it and you're really sincere with it, and I'm not just talking about you know developing technique and things like that, you're developing your head. And let me tell you something, you don't develop your head by saying I want to develop my head. You develop your head by practicing and doing what you're supposed to do, which is what Musashi constantly said. You practice it, it, it will reveal itself to you. That's when you know what's happening. There you go. Hanshi Alexander, yeah. thank you so much Steve for coming Kaufman. on this show. That's oh, right. Right. my pleasure. I really right. appreciate it. Um, and everybody out there, come and see me sometime. That's come right. Come and see me. Bring a check. <laughs> okay. Or don't. Bring a uh, uh, credit card. card. <laughs> uh, you can contact Hanshi Alexander at, your email address is? Uh, Alex Yama at Mindspring.com. Alex, A-L-E-X, Y-A-M-A. Yeah at mindspring.com yeah. and the website is www.yamazato-videos.com and you've got it all you have any questions you know how to contact me you want to ask Hanshi Alexander any questions go direct to him he will not avoid any issues Thanks very much for watching Hanchi's World. This has been a good one. I really enjoyed it. All right, it. cool. Hey, good work. I enjoyed the wall, actually. All right. <laughs> and you got a parking spot coming over. Yeah, I did. Okay. Except she didn't want to move the car. Right, well, kids. That's, hey, it's, it's this is cool. the big town. Right. No, this right. is the big apple, you know. It's, that's like, it. it's not Kansas, baby. You got it. Who's that?